Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be discussing my experiences working with Nissan Vocals, or you may know them as Crooks as they are from England. Now, full disclosure, I was sent these vocals and it has been offered for me to keep the vocal that I like best as part of my personal collection. That being said, this is not an ad, so let's go ahead and dig in. The first thing that I think you should be aware of with Nissan Vocals is that they do not have the identifying characteristics on the outside of the vocal. This is in large part because of the way that they are made. Made. Typically, vocals are made with a piece of flat metal that is formed into a circle and then a seam is added onto that. That addition of the seam allows for branding and also giving you the length of the vocal, usually indicated by a number. Now, this is important if you're looking to buy the vocal second hand. If you're buying it second hand, you need to be sure that you have a relationship with a seller so that you can be accurately aware that it fits your intonation if it is voiced for A440 or if it's voiced for A442. You also need to be sure that it actually is a Nissan vocal because the outside of it does not have the identifying characteristics of branding that are typically there. The second element that you should be aware of with Nissan vocals is that the diameter of the opening of the vocal, this is where the reed makes contact onto the vocal, is larger than any of the other vocals in my collection. Now this is of note because it's going to require you to ream your reeds. Ream your reeds more than you would typically. I noted that on my favorite vocals, the opening of the vocal was at 4.5, but when I did a measurement of the Nissan vocal, it came in at Five. Now, if you do not ream your reeds, this is going to cause intonation issues. I actually had a challenge with this when I first got the vocals immediately. I put on my favorite reed, put it into my bassoon, and I sounded horrible. And I contacted David and said, you sent me vocals that are not at A440. And he said, no, go back and ream your reeds. As soon as I reamed my reeds, the intonation was totally different. So be sure that you have a good reamer on hand if you are going to be playing with this type of vocal. As I am testing vocals, there are two elements that I'm finding increasingly important as I am playing. The first of these is what I refer to as the triangle. The triangle for me is the base of the boot when I'm playing with the seat strap in relationship to the chair. This triangle and the width of along the bottom of the triangle is telling me how much weight is going to be placed on the left arm. I have found that different muscles work differently based on the size of this triangle. So what I did is I paired the Nissan vocals that I was sent and I challenged them against my two favorite vocals. As we're looking at the triangle that is created by each of the different vocals, you can clearly see that the Nissan vocal fits right in between the sweet spot of my favorite heckle vocal and my favorite light singer vocal. So already the regular bend Nissan vocal is a match. The British bend vocal, you can see that the triangle is so large that I am already challenged. The other dimension that I am looking at more and more as I am testing vocals is how far the boot of the bassoon when playing sitting down with the seat strap is in relation to the floor. I have found that this dimension is going to tell me when I'm playing bassoon if I'm going to be playing like a turtle or if I'm going to be playing bassoon more like a giraffe because it comes in low and it allows me to drop the shoulders giving me that long neck. Yeah. Now, as we look at the dimensions of how far the boot is from the floor, you can see that, again, the regular bend Nissan vocal falls right in that sweet spot between my heckle vocal and my light singer vocal. Again, the British bend is sitting quite low. Now, this is in large part because the Nissan vocal with the British bend was actually created for bassoonists that use a spike or what you might know is looking like an end pin coming off the boot joint of a bassoon. This was developed by William Waterhouse. Now, Bill Waterhouse was extremely tall. I think he came in at 6'6", and he was looking to make accommodations due to his height so that he could play bassoon comfortably. I am only 5'6", and I don't play with a spike, so we can already tell that this is the vocal that I have returned because it was not a match for me or my setup. Now let's dig into how the vocals play. For me, when I am testing materials such as reeds, vocals, or bassoons, I view it as a bit of a balancing act. I'm looking to balance resistance and stability as well as freedom and flexibility. I find that if there's too much resistance that it's going to feel stuffy or confined or just like I have a very small color palette. I've also found that if there's too much freedom and flexibility, that there's going to be a lack of core to the sound, but also intonation and an even scale is going to be a challenge. 
Now this is going to be matching a vocal with my body. As I've mentioned, the British vocal did not match my body, but also matching it with the reed style as well as the bassoon. For me, I have to note that the Nissen vocals came a little bit in on the resistant side. This may be in part because they are formed differently than standard vocals, but for me, it was just a little bit not as free-blowing as I wanted. That being said, my friend Chandler, who plays a Heckle 10,000 series as well, found that it was a perfect match for him. He is fought a little bit for that clear intonation and even scale on his bassoon, and he found that this vocal was a match to fix that. So if you are looking for a vocal that is a little bit more stable, that maybe you're fighting intonation a little bit, this could be a match for you. But if you're looking for freedom, if you're looking for more tone colors, then I would not necessarily recommend this product for you. Be sure to comment down below if you have experiences working with Nissen vocals. I'd love to hear what you have it matched to your setup. Okay guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you don't want to miss a future video, be sure to click that subscribe button. And I will see you guys next time. Bye!